So we're in the Corporation Club, and I'm with uh, James Totland. So how's it going, James? All right, pal. Yeah, yeah. We um, it's in Steelhouse. Last last time we, we, we met, um, it was it was just it was just great because we just got back, just finished the tour with, with Deep Purple. Um, we we were lucky enough to get support for them on five or six shows, and um, and that was just amazing for us. We did uh, we, we were supporting Blackstone Cherry uh, beginning of the year. Um, and those boys were great. Um, we really enjoyed that in Europe for the first time. And then on the back of the Deep Purple stuff as well, um, we've had promoters wanting us to do our, our own shows, headline shows now in Europe, and that's what we'll be doing after this tour. So it um, did exactly what we were hoping for, uh, which was just get a bit of notice in, in, in Europe as well as this country. That's great. So how many venues are you playing on this tour then? We've got 21 shows in right. four weeks, so it's pretty yeah. intense. This is, <laughs> this is show three. Right. Um, this you know, six shows in a, in a row on, on quite a few occasions, which is pretty intense for them. Um, yeah, and you're going uh, into Europe as well with it, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we, we, the last show is in Tunbridge Wells on the 14th of October, and then we, um, then we go down to, uh, um, to, to Europe. I think we've got six shows um, in, in Europe as well. Um, I think we've got four, four in Germany, um, one in Holland, one in Austria, one in Switzerland, in Zurich. Um, so yeah, it's really exciting to to, to be asked, uh, you know, for the band to, to go out um, outside the UK as a headliner for the very first time. So I'm really excited about it. That's great. Mm. So you're in your home city. So yeah. how does that feel? Ah, oh, just driving down the bypass, you know, Parkway. <laughs> I even know what it's called. I'm, I'm that local. Um, and, and and seeing the city in front of me, um, yeah, it's it's home. It always will will be home. Um, I was born in Doncaster actually, but raised in Sheffield uh, from a, from a youngster. From I think we moved on about four or five. So all my time been growing up in this city, um, and to be moved up the room as well to the big room because I've yeah. always seen that big room downstairs and thought, wow, I can maybe play with that room one day. And here we are. So um, yeah, I'm really super excited for tonight. So have you, have you watched any bands over in this uh, in this club of the years? I think I came to watch Gary Moore right in in that big room downstairs, but I was a real youngster. I think I was 14 or something. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm sure it was this venue, but I was never 100% sure which one it was, but yeah. yeah. Did you do many gigs as a kid? Not really, no. Um, not live performances, um, because my family weren't um, really, they, they loved the music and the rock music, but they didn't really go to that much live yeah. like, uh, live events. So, um, um, but when I got old enough to kind of like, uh, when I moved out and, and I could go on my own, then, then I saw uh, plenty of bands live right here. Yeah. So the band you've got now, a great band. Uh, so how did you assemble them? Obviously, Zorab, your brother. Zorab, yeah. yeah, he's your brother. So how did you get the other guys together? Well, I, I, I'd more or less written Renegade, the first album, um, before I met even Zorab. Um, I was halfway through the writing process, um, and then I met uh, my missus, um, and that's obviously how I met Zorab because of, um, he's my missus's brother. And, um, and it was only on the invitation to meet the parents for the first time that I, I heard this young lad, who's only 19, I think, um, in his bedroom. Practicing away, um, I was like, "Wow, that kid's got some chops!" You know? <laughs> um, and he came out of the bedroom with hair down here, and he was a real metal fan, Judas Priest, massive fan, and all the rest of it. Uh, and um, but I was at that point in time wanting to get a band together to start uh, uh, rehearsing because I, I knew I'd got enough songs together, and I got management and an agent already off the back. I was working with Toby Jepson. He got quite excited about what we were doing, and, and he gave his old team a phone call, and they said, "Yeah, we'd love to support him, but..." You need to ban them. You need to get out on the road. Yeah. Um, so that just came like, kind of exactly the same time. And I gave him the demos. I gave uh, Zorob the demo. I said, if you like this stuff, I'm looking for a guitarist. Then, um, oh, and by the way, I'm your, your sister's new boyfriend. It was a bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit awkward, but he loved it, and I'm very fortunate to have him in the band. He's, he's a phenomenal talent. It's great. And then the other lads, basically, on the first album, Renegade, were um, Zorob was studying ACM in, in Guildford. Right. Um, and he got his friends that he was studying with. But unfortunately, they were also playing in, within another band. Uh, and when when Tosin just got busy enough where you couldn't really hold two things down, yeah. they decided to stop with what they'd actually created themselves, which was which was fair enough. And um, so the band members have just changed slightly just because of that. Really. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm well chuffed with what I've got. Uh, the lads I've got now, you know, Joe Yoshida on drums. Um, he's the newest member. He's been been with us for two years now. Um, Roger on bass and Ed on, on guitars as well. Um, Real tight unit, and we've got a real good rapport and a good friendship together now. Yeah, and they sound nice and heavy as well, live. It's, yeah. Uh, in the times I've seen you. Yeah, the two guitarists, you know, they complement each other. They're very, very different, which is great because they can do different things, which um, um, 
it doesn't have a glass ceiling on, on, on whatever you're trying to create really at uh, the creative process. You know, they've got very different ideas which are, are great in a rehearsal room um, because you can you can go either way with them really. Yeah. So from the two albums you've done on the EP, is there anything that stands out that you feel extremely proud of or anything? Oh, um, uh, to be honest, I mean the writing process that me and Toby have, um, we put you know, 10 or 11 songs, 12 songs on, on an album, but um, we would have written at least 25 songs to narrow it down to that. Yeah. Um, so every single one um, is chosen really, really carefully and we're really proud of, of, of them. Um, so, you know, on all three um, releases that we've had, the two albums, Renegade and Cradle of Rage and the EP, Hearts and Bones, um, I'm really chuffed with everything so far. Um, we'll Stop at Nothing is, is, um, is a real track I was really, really proud of. It was a, a um, a chord sequence on, on the piano that I've got, and again, the piano songs really, the start of the idea comes from me, but uh, they're, they're piano songs, and um, then me and Toby then collaborate on them and turn them into what they are, and the, the guitar songs are mainly from Toby, those ideas, so, right. and that's why you get the, a bit of an eclectic kind of um, vibe throughout the album. Yeah. But Worst Up and Nothing was one of my, one of my favourites so far, as well as Renegade, obviously. Yeah. I say, I must admit, I think, uh, I've got a soft spot for worst stuff at nothing. Yeah. I think it's quite anthemic. It is anthemic. Yeah. Um, it was, I'm a massive Queen fan. And when we were writing it and then we got that chorus, it, it just reminded me of We Are The Champions. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and it got that same vibe. And, you know, the audience seemed to have that similar connection to it, even those early days with it. They're, they're really kind of, they're going with it. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's exciting. We'll see what that one can do. Yeah, it is one of them that makes your hair stand up on back your neck, but I've not wearing it. <laughs> I remember that feeling. Yeah. It's, it's a simple message. Yeah, um, and, and a message that I think is quite um, um, quite relevant at the moment with everything going on. You know, yeah, I think it's good to have that vibe. And you know, we're stopping nothing exactly what it says on the tin. Um, it's just battling through adversity and all this today. Yeah, sure. um, and I think everybody, um, it's it's good to have that that that, that energy boost. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So when I saw you at Steel, I was getting mobbed by fans. Did you come out? Oh, I don't know about mob. No, there were there were one guy in particular. Won't <laughs> let you go. Oh so, yeah, 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 but he'd been on, he'd been on quite a lot of alcohol. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so, do you find any difference between the uh, music fans and then the uh, your motorcycle fans? I mean, I must admit, I didn't know. Uh, I I heard you first on Planet Rock, so I wasn't really into the motorcycle aspect. Sure. So obviously, you've got people who follow you who were motorcycle fans. Yeah. So, do you see a big difference between the? Yeah, they're much more sober in the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many bars, and they've got to ride home. <laughs> That's true, yeah. But the gigs, it's uh, you, you can get a few characters that have said a few many, but um, it always makes it interest, interesting. But it, the same, very similar mould of people, and, right? And I think that's why I was drawn to rock, and you know, with bikes, because it was a similar crowd, and that's the crowd that I enjoy being around, and, and I feel that's just where my, you know, my upbringing is. Um, and, so yeah, I can I connect really really well to to, to, to the racing fans and to the rock fans because they're all pretty similar people, all down to earth. Some look a little bit scary, but you know some of the scarier ones are the softest men you'll ever meet. Kind of thing, oh yeah, women. True, yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, but no, it, there's never any trouble. I think I've had, I think I've seen one little scuffle at all the shows in the five years, four or five years I've been doing. Oh, it's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're great people. So, uh, talking to fans, I've got some fan questions okay. from my website. <coughs> the me. sober ones, are they? The, well, just, you'll, you'll see if you're yeah. sober. So, Matt from Birmingham wants to know, if you could have a dinner party with three other people, dead or alive, who would they be? Oh, Freddie Mercury for sure. That's an easy yeah. one. Yeah. That's an easy one. But, um, crikey, I could pick each man of the Queen, to be honest. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Um, well, Freddie was shy, wasn't he? So, you'd have to get him drunk, I think, first. I don't know. I don't know. No, as I've ever met him. Yeah, I mean, I mean um, I've seen a few interviews with him. Uh, he doesn't pull any punches, you know. He, he, he had a real, I don't give a damn kind of vibe. Mm. I don't know whether that was growing up where he, uh, as he did, and you know, being gay in the through the like, 70s and 80s, which can't have been easy and all the rest of it. And to be the front man of a rock band and, and demand that kind of um, that respect, I mean, uh, you have to be some character to. Oh, to definitely, yeah. Done, and he certainly had that in, in that space, didn't he? So, yeah. yeah, look, uh, that, Freddie would definitely want. Um, Oh, would the others be? Um, I'm trying to go through music or film or or, um, or just uh, politics or whatever it may be. Um, I think uh, on a, on, a, on another music, right? I think Jimmy and Rick would have been, oh, definitely, yeah. would have been cool. Um, 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 
I'm going towards might be an interesting now with John with a piano connection in it. Yeah. So I bet you could tell some story. You know? um, I've seen quite a few interviews of Rob Elton. Um, I feel like I know him a little bit too well to where yeah. um, it's not intriguing not to invite him to a dinner party. I don't even. Yeah. I mean, so um, I think the you know people past I think are more of interest because so uh, you know it would be great to bring him back in the dead. It would. Yeah. No, the rest of it, but. Um, but yeah, any any, any iconic uh, character. Um, uh, you almost got a super group built up there with that. I know. <laughs> to be yeah. honest, if I, if I could sit with the Queen boys, or all the band, you know, if I can have an extra one. <laughs> but uh, as long as it, uh, even, even if it was Freddie and, and Brian and, and, uh, and Roger, that would be, yeah, be a great thing. To so, so you grew up more or less similar to me listening to Queen. Yeah. Uh, they were my first band, I still listen to them. I managed to see them twice with Freddie. Yeah, um, as a kid. So, this might bring me on to my next question from Baz from Cheshire, who asks, what's your favourite album and why? Oh, um, And I was, I've got it in my head, which I thought you were going to say. It, it's it's not, well, it's great to too. Right. That's yeah. what I grew up on. Yeah. So, it, it's not really, obviously, a singular album, but um, uh, the greatest hits too um, was was what got me into Queen. Got, got me into rock and roll. It was the first rock and roll band I ever heard. Right. Uh, so that that energy and that vibe and, uh, and and all the adrenaline that goes with it. That's that. The uh, greatest two was was the one, um, and it had uh, I want it all. And, um, what else was there? Some it was just it was just it was yeah. It's got kind of magic and things like that. Exactly. Around, yeah. 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 So stuff on the works onwards. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's um, you know I could listen to that all day long, every single day. But it's one of those albums that you know as soon as it has all that history with it, you know, growing up and all the rest of it. Did you move backwards through the Queen catalogue? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. Um, but I've, I've got, I've got them all. Um, I listen to them, but um, I always go back to the greatest too, just because of the nostalgia of it. You know, I think everybody kind of reverts back to what they, how they discovered and kind of really, really remember the band. Yeah. Because the earlier stuff is quite different to me. You know? Yeah. I was just saying to my daughter on the way here. Yeah. The first album I had, Queen one, was yeah. the greatest stick. Yeah. The first one sort of did about 1983, four times, yeah. so already nine. Yeah. So show me. <laughs> but that's what got me into that uh, into Queen. Yeah, and then obviously you've got the catalogue up, don't you? So yeah, yeah. Um, but but uh, you know, I had the obviously I had the Black and Black, and I had the um, um, I had Guns and Roses after Time for Destruction, um, Slippery When Wet, and Crossroads from Bon Jovi. Um, um, you know, the big ones from uh, from Aerosmith. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I did enjoy I did enjoy the uh, more the greatest hits from 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 the artists. Yeah. You know because. It, once it's on the team, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was all classic rock up. Yeah. And then later on obviously Food Fight came along, didn't they? And, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, what's, what's, what's happened lately? Um, I think Food Fighters at Wembley was was really something. Oh, did you manage to catch that? No, and no, I just watched it. I, looked, oh. I wasn't lucky enough to be there, but um, oh. I watched it on on, uh, on on YouTube or whatever it was. And uh, uh, it was the first time I thought, wow, yeah, you know, yeah. these guys are at that level now, I think, yeah. yeah. So, no, it's great to see him. It's great to you know, it, you know the story from from the and then starting out again, and you saw the venues they were playing first off. You know they were fair sizes, but they certainly weren't Wembley. So the hard work and dedication from, from Dave and all the boys, it, it really gives us inspiration that yeah, you know that is how. There's no shortcuts. That's just how it kind of can build up, and you know you keep working hard and keep focused on it. And, you know you can get there eventually if you you know if you've got the songs of it. <laughs> Uh, right, so the next one, Adele from Nottingham asks you, how did you arrive at the story for the video for Will Stop at Nothing? Um, it was a bit of a curveball one actually, because we filmed it in Germany, because we got we got signed by a German record label, Metalville. Um, and it was it was crossed between doing a video, but also uh, it was a video for the Spider, um, um, the, the three wheel motorcycle. Um, so it was more for that really, right. than it was for a music video for Will Stop at Nothing. So um, that's why maybe it was a bit of a curveball to see the, the storyline um, for the song because it probably wouldn't have been the storyline would have I would have written for, for doing that uh, video for that song a little bit, but um, but it was always going to be the rescue vehicle for me uh, right. in that in that in that in that sketch. So and does that symbolise what you've gone through? The most um, really. well, to be honest, when I was coming out the back of the ambulance, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been there a few times. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I thought I'd moved on from this, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, there, there was that kind of um, that first bit was was I knew all about that. That's why I didn't have to act too much. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what the acting was in that. Um, 
But it, again, though, it had that message of, um, you know, when, when times are tough or, or, or looking like you've got no hope and all the rest of it, you know, pick yourself up and, 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 and stop at nothing. And, and so it, it had the, it had the, um, it had the kind of soul to, 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 the, to the song. Um, but it was crossed over for, for doing the video for, for, right. the, for the tribe. For the tribe, yeah. That's fine. Right. So, uh, Sidra from Yorkshire asks, what, what are your future plans? Uh, future plans are um, keep going. Um, hopefully pick up a few uh, other supports. Um, hopefully to close the, the, the year off, maybe. Yeah. But it's getting a bit late in the day. But you never know if you're on someone's support. Like the Blackstone and Cherry was, like, I think, not even two weeks before we got the thumbnail. Right. Um, and then Deep Purple was a little bit more notice. Um, but it, it's, it's weeks, really, that you know if you're going to be supporting someone. Um, so if something comes in after this tour, we get I get back home on the 25th of October after this. Um, so um, yeah, if I um, if I get back from that, we'll pick something up great. Um, but for next year, um, it'll be now we've started the ball rolling in Europe. It's it's um, it's hopefully going to start building like we have done in the last five years in the UK. To see if we can get that kind of level up in Europe. Because if we start you if you start building in, in other territories. Um, then we can tour a bit more. Yeah. Because we've only got really one territory at the moment. We can only do two tours a year. Yeah. In one year. So um, if we can go to all the places and keep it going, then all of a sudden it might start to be a, um, a proper job for the whole band. Because it's impossible to have it as a full career just right. in one territory, really. Yeah. Just because of the restrictions on how much you can play. Right. So. And finally, do you have a message for your fans? Um, oh, well, there's past ones and, and, and present ones. And, uh, you know, thanks to the, the, the past ones for accepting me. Doing something else, I know it's not been easy to um, to accept a uh, professional sportsman to to do something else, and for people to kind of understand it and get it. And, um, but I really feel that we're crossing over that bridge now, where they realise just how much music was a part of my life before I even got into bikes. Um, so the credit and, and, and the history is starting to, to come a bit, especially in the industry as well. Yeah. And all the hard work I put in for the last five years, and, um, but it really feels that uh, um, I saw a review this morning. Um, and, it, and it was just a really great review of the gig from, from last night um, in Wolverhampton. Um, and then it said, um, the, the band name is his, is his name and he is well known for something else. And all it added was in brackets, read up if, you, if you're into it. And that, there was no more mention of what it was or anything. It was just all about the gig. And, that, yeah. and that's the first time it's gone from it the, being the biggest part of the story. Yeah. I used to be a whatever, motorcycle racer and winning or other. other. Um, and all of a sudden now it's come down to just a little sentence in brackets saying, you know, if, you, if you're interested in that, check it out. But this is the main thing. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah. That, was, that was really important. But so, you know, just a big thank you for everybody who's allowed me to do that. Well, I know you've got to get to your sound check, don't you? Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much no for your time. No problem. I do appreciate it. Pleasure. Cheers. No problem.